morning, guys. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Going to wait a little bit here and let some people get on. I thought I would do this outside today. It is just unbelievably gorgeous. The weather here has been amazing. Um, we had rain, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before and into Monday. So it cooled things off. It um, gave us some moisture. Good morning, Chad. Hope you're doing good today. And it's just the the weather here is just amazing. It is absolutely just amazing. So as much as I wanted to I stay inside, I thought I'm going to figure it out and do this outside today. So hopefully the connection works well for me. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought I would show you guys what we've been up to here. Um, this summer has been wild and wooly. I'm sure you guys have been crazy too. There's just seemed like a really fast paced summer for everybody. But I'm going to spin this around. <coughs> Excuse me. Right here, you can see one of the two piles of wood that has been milled here. Um, it's laying here uh, to keep it flat and keep it from warping and also to let it dry out. It was dead standing timber, but it still holds moisture. So we have that. And I don't know if I can show you this or not, but they have this one covered just to keep it protected from the rain. And let me just see if I can. And there you have a whole bunch more lumber underneath there. You see flying sawdust, uh-oh. <laughs> yes, lots, yes. And actually over there at the mill, the mill is what is covered in the blue tarp right there. There are several trees, I don't know if you can see them, but there are several trees lying there waiting to be milled. And there are several others laying down here that need to be brought up to be milled. So lots to be done. But we have definitely been busy. The guys have been busy. I keep them fed. I keep them watered <laughs> while they're, they're doing all of this part. I did help the mountain man a couple weeks ago. So when the guys aren't available, I jump in and help him. But we've been really trying to get the wood milled so that this winter we can finish the inside of the house. God, you know, we had our plan of what we thought this summer was going to be like and God had his plan. And obviously we all know that God, God's plan is bigger and greater than ours. So, um, that was the case. Uh oh, I'm being joined by kitties. Bear with me here while I get this set up. Um, I'm liable to be mauled by cats here. The homestead kittens have joined me. Look at this face. Is that not the cutest? Well, she looks freaked out a little bit there, but my nice little fluffy kitty. Go play. <laughs> Good morning, Rachel. So, as I was saying, you know, we had a plan, but you know what? You have to have a plan. Um, glad to see you on here, Rachel. I'm glad you're healthy and well. Oh, I've got a cat climbing up my back and on my lap. This is going to be interesting. Um, there's three of them. There's peaches and charcoal. The other one was fluffy and they're not going to leave me alone because I'm like at their level. Maybe I wasn't thinking too swell here. But anyway, when you have a plan, it's important to have a plan. Um, you got to get the, the mo forward motion going. If you stay stagnant, um, you, you're not gonna, nothing's gonna happen. But if you get the plans going, I'm just trying to hang on to her so she stops climbing because she likes to go around everybody's neck, at least the guys. Anyhow, I'm gonna try, <laughs> I might have to move here. Um, and we, we put a plan in motion. We had thoughts in mind and we, we put the plan together so that um, there was forward motion and God altered that forward motion by giving us lots of work this summer and um, right now we've got a lot of new work coming in so God has blessed us greatly in that way so you know we are continuing to move forward we are milling our lumber getting it ready so that <laughs> well there you go <laughs> like I said she likes shoulders all right stay put anyway don't call me the crazy cat lady. I only have three. <laughs> but this one likes attention. Anyway, um, 
So by milling this lumber and being able to finish our home, um, we will be able to have a much greater chance of selling it next spring. So happy to see you. How can I pray for you uh, to have a better day? Oh, thank you, Cindy. Um, yes, exactly, Chad. We trusted him. We are trusting him for the total <laughs> outcome of our circumstances. And that is what we've got to do. You know, trusting doesn't mean that... <laughs> All right, I've got to, I got to move cats here. Hang on. <laughs> you are attached. Go on. Oh, the other one's drinking my coffee. That's great. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move here a second. Um, this was a good idea, sort of. I'm being mauled. So anyway, I'll stand up here and chat with you guys <laughs> and let my cat drink my coffee. It's herbal coffee, so it shouldn't be going off the walls or anything. I had a couple things that I brought with me, so I want to set them here so that I can uh, have access to them. That was funny, huh? You never know what's going to happen on my homestead, ever. It's always a mystery, and there's always something crazy going on. Sorry for all the motion. I'm trying to put this on the wood pile here to... They're joining me now here, too, but at least they won't be able to climb on me. Okay. Um... Cindy, I am grateful for your prayers anytime and just for uh, us to see God's will in, in the happenings and so forth um, and just to follow his lead. That's always most important to us. And uh, if anybody else needs prayer, I've got amazing prayer warriors on here, Chad and Tammy and Cindy and Rachel's a very good prayer warrior um, like I always say you don't need to um, share you know your circumstances if you need prayer all you need we need to know is that you need prayed for um, and I really appreciate you asking that Cindy so like Chad said when you trust in him you know even if we weren't on the right track or on the right path just the fact that we started the motion and we were trusting him for the outcome and trusting um, ourselves to keep looking for his will and, and his path and his leading, um, you know, things will, will move. When we stay in a stagnant spot and are afraid and, and, and fear and worry sets in, nothing typically happens that's good. So, oh, oh how fantastic. Hi, Linda. Glad to have you joining me from Denmark. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so it's really important that you, you do trust in God and that you, you are willing to follow his lead. You know, we, like I said, we had a plan. Many people have plans and they want their plan to be the one that God answers, but that's not always how it happens. So you need to be willing to roll with, um, your circumstances. You need to be willing to roll with God's decisions rather than yours. So just keep that in mind. So, you know, we put it out there. We were very transparent, very vulnerable this spring. And and we've been persevering. We've been pushing on. We've been working hard. We've been tiring out. That's another thing that you could pray for, Cindy, um, is our strength and endurance through this because it, it is tiring. When you're in rough circumstances, um, just like Jonah in the belly of the whale and, and so many of the other stories, you know, they had long, long time of, of unfortunate circumstances, 40 years in the wilderness, you know, and it's really easy to tire, but if you keep turning to God for your strength, you'll, you'll, you'll make it through, even though it's tiring, even though we hit low spots, even though, you know, we question things, God will get you through. Trust me, trust me, God will get you through. I'm going to let the tripod go. There is a cat here still, and I just don't know if he's going to take, she's going to take out the uh, tripod at any given time here. So if it goes crashing down, that's why. I know, imagine that, 40 years. You know, we're just dealing with months here. And exactly, I mean, that's a long, long time. And it's just, it's just perspective, guys. It's perspective and, and trust. If you can trust and eliminate the fear and the worry in your life, oh my goodness, it is so much more enjoyable. I love my life despite our craziness. I love our life. And <laughs> Okay, the cats are still here. Um, so last week we talked about preparing for winter. And I talked about your home and... Um, no, you guys stay down. Oh, I'm too animated. I'm talking with my hands and they're trying to chase my fingers. Um, 
I came out here to avoid the dogs. Isn't that funny? Now I'm dealing with the cats. So it's an animal day at the homestead. But we talked about your uh, vehicles, um, preparing your home, um, having enough firewood and everything. So this week um, I want to talk about herbals and herbal medicines for the winter months because it's really important. You know, with us out here where we are, um, you know, there are doctors. I've kind of lost my faith in... Um, in, in modern medicine. Um, it does have its place, but I have truly lost my faith in it in a lot of ways. Um, big pharma and big medicine and big dollars is more important than the human being, and that's really hard to take. Um, I experienced a lot with my um, surgery and my situation and my illness, and just seeing the things and seeing how quick people are to prescribe. When there's something natural you could take that doesn't have a uh, three sheet list of side effects and so forth. So I want to encourage you guys to learn how to care for your family in natural ways. Um, there are a ton of references in today's description below. So I want you to be sure to check that out and um, follow the links and save the links. Um, for those of us that use Evernote, Chad, <laughs> I don't know if there's others that are using Evernote, but Evernote is awesome. It is a note-taking app, and when you go to a website, you can actually um, use an other app called Web Clipper and save web pages to Evernote for future reference, for future reading. Um, I save them as an archive. So you'll see me referencing a lot of the Wellness Mamas. Katie over at the Wellness Mama is awesome. She's got fantastic information on natural remedies and natural medicines. Um, so she's one of my go-to resources. And I, you will see me referencing her a lot. I save a lot of her recipes. Um, and the trick and the thing to do is to get the recipes you need for your winter months, cough drops, um, immune boosting tea, and so forth, and um, get the ingredients list for all those and then stock up on those things. Yeah, exactly, Chad. If you're not using Evernote, you should be. It is, I, I could not function without Evernote. Um, instead of carrying the notebook around, I carry my iPad and my iPhone, and um, you can you can save things, you can print things off. It's not like um, what you put in Evernote is lost forever if it were to crash. You do, and there's backups. They're an extremely efficient company and they definitely take care of things. So I recommend them greatly. But um, I have a list of things on here that I feel you should have on hand. Um, I did mention echinacea um, as one of the herbs, but you can also get a tincture of echinacea. And um, oops, pushing too many buttons there. And uh, colloidal silver. Colloidal silver is a really important one to have on hand. It is huge for boosting your immune system um, and, and so useful for sickness and illness. And there's also a link on how you can make your own. Um, you can make your own colloidal silver. Uh, you can also purchase it. So there's links there for both. I also have a link there for um, where I purchase my herbs from. I purchased from Mountain Rose Herb, and I also am getting from Pure Life Health Shop. Um, the link there will take you to their holding page. I am actually designing their website right now, but they are a local resource to me that is... Um, fantastic for me because I don't have to wait for shipments anymore and they will be selling online also. <clears throat> so once that is live um, I will announce that but it, that is the link that you can save and that will get you there and keep you uh, connected with them. I also have my immune boosting tea. This tea is so, I, we are big tea drinkers in the winter time especially and um, this tea is a really tasty tea. Sometimes when you're drinking things that are supposed to cure what's ailing you, they aren't the tastiest. So this one is cinnamon and licorice root and astragalus root and it's just a really nice cinnamony warm tea that I really, really like. So I drink that sometimes just because, but it's really good to um, uh, boost your immune system if you are coming down with something. So I highly recommend that. And I have Katie from the Wellness Mama's um, Herbal Cough Drop Recipe link there as well.
but um, and I have a list of essential oils ah, that I am going to share below um, and that you guys can reference. Um, the other one is Lipospheric C. It is a vitamin C that is um, a uh, high dosage of vitamin C and is really, really good to help um, your immune system also. And I keep that on hand. Arnica is also something that I keep on hand all the time. I use it with my dogs. It's good t for healing and good for injury. Um, when the mountain man fell off our roof, um, he actually didn't fall off the roof. He was on the ladder at the very top at the 16 foot of our eaves over there. I'll show you then. Um, these cats are at the tripod again. Um, he landed on one of his heels. That's what caught the fall. And um, I gave him Arnica right away, and that never swelled. It never bruised. He does have a little bit of nerve damage on the one spot of his foot, but he... Ah! Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. All right, just stay there. Just get your tail out of my nose. <laughs> the, other, the other thing... <laughs> The other thing that I recommend is um, Ditta Gel, which is really good for pain and healing also. <laughs> oh, you crazy cat. Come here. Go down. Scared the poop out of me. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. No, don't jump on me again. <laughs> The other one is magnesium oil. Magnesium oil is really amazing. Um, if you've been following me, you know that I've been having problems with these muscles tightening on me and also being having problems swallowing because of the muscles up in here. And since I started using the magnesium oil, no, I see you looking at me. The magnesium oil actually works very quickly in penetrating your muscles and it causes them to relax and nourishes them. So having magnesium oil on hand is really good also because um, if you get a lot of cramps in your legs while you're sleeping and things, it's because you're lacking magnesium. Uh, you may be lacking potassium too, but it's typically magnesium that you're missing. So you can spray the magnesium oil on the spot that you are cramping and you will instantly get relief. So that's another good one. And there's also a recipe there. Ah, a recipe there. Um, and actually that's what's shared there is the recipe to make your own. And um, highly recommend having that. The other one is castor oil. Oh, this cat. <laughs> Come here. Get down. There we go. That's how I got clawed. All right. Um, castor oil is the other one that I think is really important to have on hand. Castor oil is great. Um, in the description below, there are books being referenced from a couple weeks ago. And the Be Your Own Doctor, I believe it is, yeah, that has the castor oil pack suggestions and uses. Um, when you're having liver trouble and, and different organ trouble, you can put a castor pack on there and the castor oil pools. So I use it on my bottom of my feet pretty much every day and that is what helps keep my lymphatic system open. I was having problems with my lymphatic system clogging and um, by using the castor oil on my feet, it helps pull. If you have um, cancerous spots on your body, you can use castor oil on it and it will pull the cancer and the toxins and the garbage out of your system as well. So um, castor oil is something really, really good to have on hand. The other thing is coconut oil. I love coconut oil. I cook with coconut oil, but I eat coconut oil daily. I typically eat a tablespoon or more of coconut oil every day. Um, it is just so helpful. It helps with candida. It helps um, with infections. It's just amazing. And then I use coconut oil, um, aloe vera, organic aloe vera and my essential oils to make different creams and salves and, and different things. Um, the other thing is activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is another um, toxin pooler. Um, it's a binder. Uh, I take those. I was taking those on a regular basis. I'd either take those or uh, liquid bentonite clay, which enables um, the toxins that are moving in my body to be bound so that they don't reabsorb into my system and that is what's helping me to progress with my healing. So it's learning these things and knowing these things and having these things on hand that can be so beneficial. The other thing like with activated charcoal, 
um, a bee bite. Put a little bit of honey and activated charcoal together and put that on the bee bite and that will pull out the, the venom and the toxins from the bite and eliminate the stinging and any infection there because bees and mosquitoes carry infection and when your immune system is impaired like mine it makes me a little freakish I don't want to be walking around in my life where I am like paranoid and afraid of things so I want to be able to combat those things and that's these are the things I use and these are the things I want to recommend to you guys to have on hand now my herb list is long because I use it um, for all my teas each herb has its own purpose. Um, some herbs get combined together to be more powerful. Um, but as you learn how to use the teas and what they're good for, um, and the many things that they're good for, because many of these herbs are good, well, they are, all of them are good for multiple things. But you can see through the list, and what I have is the raw herb itself. Um, for example, elderberries I will be foraging soon and I will be making syrup and jelly and tinctures, but I will also dry the berries so that I can use them in tea throughout the winter months. And then you can also, if you run out of tincture, you can use the dry berries to um, create tinctures through the winter months. So this is just so important to know this stuff and to have these things on hand. Elderberry is an extreme immune booster, antioxidant, and really, really good um, for when you are getting sick in the winter months, anytime really, but the winter months is when things set in. And with the cooler weather setting in, um, <laughs> cats at the tripod again, no, you do not need to jump on me. Um, so I'll just read through the list of things I have. Had some elderberry this morning. Awesome. How did you, how did you have it? Did you use a tincture? Or I love having elderberry tea also just because of the flavor. But I have echinacea, elderberry, cinnamon sticks, astragalus root, licorice root, dandelion root, paw diarco, red clover, chamomile, rose hips, cayenne powder, turmeric powder, anise seeds, um, black pepper, cracked, uh, milk thistle, comfrey root, alfalfa, leaf, holy basil, nettle leaf, hops, bladderwrack, and Irish moss. Now. Those are things I'm recommending. I have a whole herbal pantry full of so many more herbs, but these are the ones that um, I recommend because they are good to have on hand to be able to make things um, for illness like your flus and your coughs and, and just building the immune system. Straight syrup, awesome. We use elderberry all winter. I make a syrup, awesome, exactly. And it's great for coughs. You can do all kinds of things with it and it tastes good. I, wine is also very good and, and elderberry is good for cancer. It's got such high level of antioxidants more than any other berry. So it's an extreme cancer fighter. Um, just to go through the list just a little bit here, dandelion root is, um, an expectorant, it, um, that's not right. Dan, this cat is climbing up the back of my leg now. <laughs> this is the other one. Oh. All right, go down. <laughs> they love me. Anyway, um, dandelion helps get rid of uh, fluid in your system. It's also really good for the kidneys and, and liver. They just love me today. This is crazy. I thought I'd get away from animals because the dogs have been crazy and not listening and I thought I'd come out here. All right, um, red clover is good for the blood and Paul Diarco is good to get rid of um, uh, parasites and things in the gut and um, is good to drink periodically because unfortunately that's just something that happens to us and people people think it's just animals that get parasites but we get parasites too so and the the paw diarco is an actually really nice tasting tea um, I used to mix it with black walnut uh, tincture then it tastes a little nasty um, but the paw diarco is a really good tea um, chamomile is obviously due to uh, calm you. Uh, rose hips is great in vitamin C and uh, boosting the immune system. Um, Aniseeds is good for the digestive system. Uh, milk thistle is good for the liver. Alfalfa is really good for us ladies. As so so is uh, raspberry tea. Um, and 
I don't have the other one on here. Holy basil is really good for me um, and maybe good for some of you that are um, have histamine intolerance or that you build too much histamine in your body. Um, the holy basil helps to uh, reverse that. So I drink a lot of holy basil tea. Nettle leaf tea is really good for allergies and healing. Nettle is, is something that is good for a lot of things. So that's one I always have on hand. And um, bladderwrack and Irish moss together, um, if you are having problems um, eating food because you've been so sick, those two together will provide you with all the minerals you need to um, make it through your illness and still that your body's getting all that it needs to have. So they're good to have on hand. Um, I would love to hear you your input and some of your favorite herbs that you keep on hand and why if you guys want to share that with me and those of you that are watching on YouTube or Patreon later um, share that in the comments too it's always good to learn from each other and see what everybody's favorites are those are some of my favorites those are the main ones that we utilize pretty regularly and then the oils that I shared um, a lot of them are um, good for your common cold. They're also good for your earache. They're good for infection. Um, others are good to help clear the air. Uh, when you have infection going through the home, you want to be able to disinfect. I have uh, diffusers running all the time in my home. I have three of them and they run pretty regularly all year long. And um, then there are some for some of the odd different things that may occur and that you may need. Um, bladder infection, you can use lemongrass and just rub that on your abdomen and on the bottom of your feet. Um, clove is really good for toothaches. So if you don't know that, you can put clove on the, t the area that on uh, the tooth that is giving you trouble and um, you'll get amazing results. It won't necessarily heal that. You can use other oils um, for the healing, but the clove will numb the area and get rid of the pain that you're experiencing. So I have tea tree oil, which is a great one for like a disinfectant um, and also a uh, type of antibiotic healing oil. I have rosemary. Oregano is another. Um, that's like an antibiotic in my opinion. You have lavender, helichrysum. Eucalyptus is great when you have sinus issues and you need to uh, clear your sinuses either smelling from the bottle or uh, put a drop or two in a bowl of water that had just boiled and put a towel over your head and breathe in carefully. Um, you don't want to be breathing in too hot of water because you will burn your lungs and your sinus cavity. And uh, <laughs> Kitties, stop. All right. So now, also, this is like having children. <laughs> um, the other ones I have on here are basil, geranium, frankincense, peppermint. And peppermint is good for headaches, sinus headaches. We also have On Guard and Thieves. They are both very similar oils, just different companies. And um, I like utilizing those in my diffuser because they smell amazing. And they also kill mold and varying things in the air and get rid of all the germs in the air. We like mint, catnip, nettle, red raspberry, and rose hips. Awesome. Yes, catnip's another good one. Thank you for sharing that, Tammy. Um, Purify is another good one. Um, I get that from uh, doTERRA. Uh, I know there's other companies that have it. The um, Rocky Mountain Oils also has it. Um, that is a great combination of oils that actually um, eliminates odors. So if you have an area that needs deodorized, um, even a camper. I, I say that because Mountain Ben just got a an old truck and it had a camper on the back and he's cleaning it and restoring things and um, that's just a perfect example. Um, your home, if you had made fish or onions or something that you want to get rid of. Um, so it's just a great oil to eliminate the nasty smells that pop up sometimes. Good morning, Teresa. Um, a, a respiratory blend is a good one to have also. Lots of respiratory issues and that's something I didn't mention. Mullen leaf is something that you should have on hand also. Mullen leaf you can drink as a tea, but something really unique with mullen leaf and which um, is kind of um, 
counterintuitive to our thought process, you can smoke mullein leaf and that will help clear your lungs. You know, you, you think of smoking a cigarette and how that's clogging your lungs, but the mullein leaf actually opens your lungs up when you smoke it. So that is something also that is really important to have on hand if you have lung issues throughout the winter months. Um, I mentioned the clove oil. Ginger is really good for your stomach. It's also good to help open um, the lymphatic system. You can actually soak in a tub with ginger in it and that will help open things up if you are dealing with um, a clogged lymphatic system. Um, thyme, white fur, and lemongrass. Another tip with lemongrass, if any of you are out there have problems with heavy odors, like you go to the mall and the candle store just knocks you for a loop and you get a headache and feel sick, or the uh, cleaning aisle at the grocery store, my um, sinuses and my sense of smell has intensified so much since my surgery that I cannot handle smells like pumping fuel kills me but I found that putting lemongrass on the tip of my nose or just smelling it before I do these things or before I go to the grocery store or even at church if there's people wearing overpowering perfume lemongrass will coat your sinuses and eliminate you struggling with those odors. So also if you know of special needs children, um, there are children that are on the spectrum that struggle with odors and that may be a very huge help to them. So yeah, I can't stand the smells, Chad. I, it's tough. I, I never had that problem before, but wow. I mean, some things were really strong, but now I'll pay the price if I don't protect myself. So wanted to mention that. Um, are there any oils that you guys enjoy using and why? And I'm going to dig something else out here. The cats have found other things blowing around and are busy now. One is still here watching me, so I'm liable to get attacked again. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that was of help to you. Hopefully you've gained some knowledge on some different herbs and oils and uh, different recipes that are available. Oh, that's a shame. That's hard when you have that the, the whole time. Have you tried the lemongrass? Because it helps so much, Chad. Um, I was gonna say, oh, I forgot to put a link in, and when I'm done here, I'll go in the house and get that on there. I did a video on how to drain your lymphatic system, and the reason I want to share that is because when you drain your lymphatic system, you, your lymphatic system runs down through here, up in through your sinuses, and you can drain all of this. So if you have no, if you have an ear infection, um, by draining your lymphatic system and draining this area, you will actually drain your your uh, eustachian tubes also so it's a really good thing to know it's also good to know how to drain your lymphatic system that if you have lumps in here because of sickness um, you can help drain that and and help clear that infection by doing the drainage and then also treating it with the different uh, immune boosting um, oils and herbs and things yeah, awesome, Chad. Give it a try. That has been my saving grace is using lemongrass like that. I carry it with me wherever I go. I now carry a little, I carry my oil with me and I carry a little spray bottle like this same size uh, with magnesium oil so that I have that stuff with me all the time. Um, the other thing is with bee bites um, and allergic reactions to things, um, peppermint lavender and lemongrass across your chest bone and behind your ears um, is a very heavy duty uh, release of um, al allergic reactions as is nettle. Nettle tea is amazing um, for allergies so you, that's another reason why we keep that on hand but the bees have been really bad here this year. <laughs> So um, I've been carrying that stuff around with me because I don't know what my reactions are going to be um, to the bites. The um, first bee bite that I got, I ended up with pink eye in both eyes. Good to know about the lemongrass. Yeah, absolutely, Tammy. It's just it's just learning these little things. And and the thing is, guys, use get Evernote. Use Evernote. You can find it by going to tryerwilderness.com/evernote and create yourself a note in there with all these little tips and tricks in there that you can refer back to or create a note for allergies and create a note for odds and ends tips with oils you know so that you whatever works with your brain that you'll remember um, but 
definitely record this stuff because we all think we're going to remember it and there's a time in our lives where we can, but then there's also things that happen that cause us not to remember. So by recording it, you're ahead of the game. And I, I just think it's really important. The other thing is to pass this along. Um, while I am sharing, I'm going to share two more things with you on, on, on natural health. Um, lemon, uh, lavender. If you get pink eye, and <laughs> this cat's attacking me here, getting ready to jump. Um, if you put lavender across your eyebrows and down the bridge of your nose, that will help remove, um, that will help get rid of uh, pink eye. The other thing that I was recently told, which is really, really amazing, we use a lot of peppermint oil lately for teething babies. Yeah? Yeah, that's awesome. Oils are so, so nice. It's just, it's just knowing you know, respecting them. A lot of people overuse oils. You know, when they start to use oils, they think they have to use a lot, like a whole, bun whole bunch of drops where I use one drop when I'm working with my oils on what I'm, you know, depending what I'm working on. But I always start out and, and go light. And then if you need more, you use more later. But one drop of essential oils is strong. Like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I dropped a, a drop of lemongrass on my keyboard my computer keyboard and it started eating it so it just gives you perspective on how you need to be careful with the oils with the herbs it's always good if you're making a tea to do a teaspoon of the herb in an infuser and or in a bag you can create your own tea bags um, I use an infuser um, my mother-in-law got me this wonderful glass infuser that has a piece that sets down in, in it and, and infuses and has a lid and it's wonderful. So there's all kinds of different infusers you can get and you can mix multiple teas together. I'm always mixing teas. Some teas you can pour boiling water over. Other teas like my immune boosting tea, you need to boil on the stove for a while. Typically when you're using roots like that, you want to um, boil it and simmer it on the stove, not boil it, boil it for a long period of time. Um, get it to boiling and then let it simmer and just uh, that way the uh, roots can, you can extract all the goodness from the roots. Um, is there a way to share your notes on Evernote? Yeah, you can share and collaborate notes with people by using their email address. I use Evernote to collaborate with my virtual assistants um, and um, Austin and I collaborate on some notes, you know, to keep him accountable or him keeping me accountable, so it's kind of cool. You can do that. So yes, by email. Um, oh, I forgot what I was saying. Um, oh, I know what the other thing I wanted to share with you was, though. So um, with teas, a teaspoon is usually good, but you can blend multiple teas together. I'll do chamomile and nettle, or um, but a teaspoon of each is is good. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is if anybody ever gets shingles or knows somebody that gets shingles. Um, I have a friend who got them 10 years ago and she gets them every year since. And she can feel the onset of them and when she starts to feel the onset of them she puts coconut oil on it right away. And um, the day that they start to show themselves she puts oil all over the, the red spots and by the end of the day, they're scabbed over, and she's pretty much done with the episode of shingles. Now, if she wouldn't put the coconut oil on, she'd have several days, several weeks of shingles pain. So keep that in mind. Shingles is very, very painful. And um, something as simple as coconut oil. She used to use honey, and it worked, but not near as good. Uh, but the other thing was it was so sticky. But So she's been using coconut oil. And that has helped her so much. And she shared that with me and she said, please share that with everybody you talk to. Um, because it is painful and, and we, she wanted to pass it on. So there you go. So if you know anybody or you end up with shingles, keep that in mind um, in regard to uh, quick healing on that. So that's what's nice with the oils and the natural healing. Um, I had a rash on my face when I was 14. That's actually what got me started into natural medicines, and my interest peaked. Um, I got three cortisone shots in the matter of, I believe it was a four-month period. Way excessive, way too many, and my, my mother was seeking additional help before they gave me another one. Um, and she took me to this holistic doctor, 
and he used iridology. So he looked in my eyes and could tell, um, and he also used muscle testing um, to see what was going on in my body. And within 15 minutes, he told me what was wrong. He told me that I had too much acid in my system and gave me some supplements to take. And within three days, the rash that was like fire engine red, sore and just really unattractive. And at 14, you know, you care about those things. Um, and it was gone. So that's what piqued my curiosities to natural health. And then when I had babies and um, knew that I could help them so much faster. And um, if, for those of you that do have young children, you know, antibiotics get stuck in the system. So when our children are young, their immune systems can be impaired and, uh, or depending what they're around, daycares and different things. And you end up on a lot of antibiotics. Well, the antibiotics actually clog in their system and then they just continue to make them sick. So you need to break those antibiotics back down and you can do that naturally. So there's so many things we can do to make our lives so much better and we can be so much healthier by being proactive and using some of these things. Um, I use milk thistle every day because I am catering to my liver um, because it was so taxed. So it's really important that we, we know how to take care of ourselves and, and also learn how to kind of, self, well not kind of, that we self-diagnose. Um, I wouldn't be alive today if I wasn't self-diagnosing myself before my surgery for four years. Um, my, I got down there for my surgery and my organs were shutting down. So it's really important that we know and trust and, 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 and um, listen to our bodies. That's so important. Dee Dee says, great job explaining. We have been using herbal remedies about 20 years. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> and glad to hear it. Um, I, I couldn't imagine without, you know, living without them. And it's kind of funny with our getting ready to move and packing things and everything. I have such a vast amount of natural remedies. And it just makes me, you know, celebrate that we have these things available. And, you know, we have not gone to a medical doctor in eight years. And actually, it may be more than that. I don't remember going before we moved out here. But for the last eight years, other than my surgery and two ER visits, we haven't used medical doctors at all. So we've been able to keep ourselves healthy. And the other thing you guys have to remember is what we put in our bodies also alters our health. Or it can heal us. And if you are eating a lot of processed foods and GMOs, you are actually causing harm to your body and are actually making your body sick. So keep that in mind. What we put in produces the quality of what we are. So just keep that in mind. I wanted to read something to you today. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, let me see here. Give me a second and share with me if you guys have questions or anything, um, feel free. If you're watching this on the replay, feel free to ask questions and I will have some giveaways going on um, in the next three, four weeks. I am not sure yet what I'm going to do next week. Um, I may not be on next week and I will make that known on the Facebook page and you will be seeing more of me. I know I've been not on there a lot sharing things. I took a little bit of a hiatus to um, reevaluate how I want to do things. So forgive my absence, but get ready. I'm coming back. <laughs> All right, let me see here. I wanted to read something and I knew it grabbed me this morning. Okay. This is, some, this is my devotional this morning, and it says, um, we were reading about Joseph and the three coats that he wore, and today's the third coat Joseph wore was the coat of destiny. Because Joseph honored God in the most difficult of circumstances, he ended up on the throne of Egypt, wearing the coat of rulership and fulfilling his destiny. The psalmist said God sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave, they hurt his feet with fetters, he was laid in irons. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of his possessions. The tests and temptations you are facing are over your future. They are preparing you for your destiny. All of your life can be training for one season, for one assignment. The greater the assignment, the greater the attack that will come against you. Five times in Genesis chapter 39, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. 
but that did not exempt him from betrayal by his family or repeated temptation at the hands of his boss's wife or slander and false imprisonment or disappointment at the hands of the butler he befriended in the prison. Looking back, however, Joseph realized that all of these experiences were training for the reigning. When Stradivarius was asked why he used only wood taken from trees that had weathered the biggest storms to make his violins, he replied, weather-beaten wood makes the sweetest music. So persevere, keep trusting God, and you'll sing a song of victory. Isn't that cool? I thought that was very awesome. It just makes me, you know, it made me think of our circumstances. And, um, you know, and I've always said that the things we go through prepares us for tomorrow. You know, I, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I would not be the warrior that I am today if I hadn't experienced the things I've already experienced. And um, initially in my younger days, I was a warrior because I was a warrior. But now I am a warrior for Christ and I love it. It's awesome. It's an amazing life. I couldn't imagine my life any other way. And, um, you know, you can look at challenges in two different ways. You can be upset and in despair from your challenges, or you can be awestruck and excited about your challenges because those challenges have a purpose and those challenges are leading you to something really, truly amazing. Because I, I know that what God has in store for us and our plan and our purpose on this earth is amazing. So even if you, last week we spoke about it, you know, um, if you are, are destined to be the prayer warrior or you are destined to be the encourager ra rather than the um, warrior in battle or whatever the case may be, your position is still important because you may very well be the encourager and the prayer warrior for the for the warriors and those in battle and in the bigger battles. So we all have an important spot. I'm just trying to take all this in. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of information. That's why I left lots of notes. And you can replay this video as many times as you like and watch the cats attacking me. That had to be ridiculous. <laughs> all right, I have another one I'm going to read to you real quick here. Today's Blessings. This is from the book I was telling you about last week, Gentle Hugs um, for Hurting Hearts. This is the woman who is going through chronic illness. And I just, I just think this is just such an amazing book. Um, recently, I painted a picture of my childhood home. The house sold nearly 30 years ago and has fallen into despair. I painted from memory the well-kept shrubs, flowering bushes, and the quaint stone wall. During the painting process, wonderful memories flooded my mind of the secret place where I played with my favorite dolls, where I kept my bike, breaking open hickory nuts with a hammer on the stone wall, watermelon and soda pop bringing refreshment on steamy summer days, snowy winter days of sledding, mittens, warm suppers, and the sweet smell of clean sheets when bedtime came. It is easy to remember the past as the good old days, but we shouldn't prefer yesterday above today because we may miss the blessings God has for us right now. Mingled with today's problems are today's blessings that will be tomorrow's sweet memories. Our daily trials sometimes require us to look a little harder to find today's blessings. We have a choice to make. As a child of God, we need to determine to choose joy over worry. And I'm going to add fear to that too. Joy is a wonderful life-giving gift from our Heavenly Father. He tells us He wants our joy to be full and with God's strength, we can keep our thought life under the control of the Holy Spirit and live in the joy of our salvation. Joy is greater than happiness. Happiness is dependent on our ever-changing circumstances, but joy is deeper and abides within us because we have a, long, a loving Savior that never changes. Psalm 1611 Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence of fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And then she always does a prayer, and I just think this is really neat too. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful memories we can have to remind us of family and friends. Thank you for the daily blessings you bring in, into our lives because you love us so much. Strengthen us in your words so that we do not become overwhelmed with our problems. May we keep our eyes upon you so we can be filled with a deep and abiding joy that reflects your love for us and for those we come in contact with each day. Thank you for being the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I just thought that was cool. I thought they were pretty empowering, and I wanted to share them with you guys today. So I hope that um, reached you guys as well as it did me. 
But guys, I know I've been on here long, so I am going to say a prayer and um, just thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this beautiful, glorious day. Thank you for giving me the right words and leading me every week to share what is important to these wonderful people that join join us and, and our friends and our, our community that just is so empower, empowering and powerful. And I just love how they communicate and help one another. Lord, just bless them all. And I ask that you just wrap your loving arms around them, give them strength and courage for whatever they may be going through. Bless them with healing for those that are in need. I ask that you lift up um, Deborah Kidd today, as well as Pat Kenny. Um, Deborah is dealing with uh, liver cancer, and Pat is dealing with cancer, but also heart issues. Lord, I just ask that you heal them and love on them, give them courage, give them peace and hope and comfort that you are there. And Lord, I just ask that you put your loving arms around everyone in our audience and just strengthen them and give them a good week and just help them to keep their eyes on you. And Lord, for those that do not know you, just uh, may the opportunity open up for them to get to know you. 